Hello, I'm going to show you how to um, complete a Man With Me U test. So, in order to kind of do a Man With Me U test, you need to have data from your DV that is either or null interval. Um, it needs to be an independent measure design and you need to be exploring a difference. So, we've got here a scenario. We've got a psychology teacher wanted to compare the effectiveness of two A-level textbooks in making psychology easy and fun to study. So the teacher decided to conduct research with students on the course to decide which new books to choose. On a piece of paper, students had to rate out of 10, with 10 being love this textbook, bye bye bye. The overall likelihood of choosing the student centre psychology textbook. So out of 12 participants, six of the participants gave ratings for one of the textbooks, textbook A, and the other six participants gave ratings for textbook B. Now, they're not rating both textbooks, they're only rating one. So the IV is which textbook, um, and the levels of textbook A and textbook B, and they're only taking part in one condition of the IV. So we've got an independent measure design, so that's correct. We select the moment you. Also we're looking for a difference between the textbooks, and we've got ratings there which are interval uh, data. Well, technically ratio, but ratio interval data. So we've got our kind of scores in a table like this. Now, the first step with the Man Whitney U is to rank these in order. So I've just put it down here in another table. Now, you're not given the table in the exam, but you can draw your own out. So if we have a look at the ratings, now we'll combine them all together. So when we look at them, which one is the smallest one? So this was we've got two. Put two in, oh, two in there. And then we've got another two. And then we've got a three. And we've got a four, five, another five, six. And a seven, we've got an eight, a nine, a ten. Oh, I missed one out. Oh, I missed out. Two fives, put that one. Okay, let me go through <laughs> So we've got, um, let's just put a little one at the top next to the ones I've got. So I've got the two, got the two, got the three, got the four, and the five, got the other five. Oh, there's two sixes as well, isn't there? That's where I've gone now. Okay, so a little tip for you if you get stuck on that one too. So we've got for two, we've got a rank order of one and two, because there's two of them there you actually need to do something with them and same with that one we've got a repetition there and we've got a repetition there so we kind of need to do something with this because we can't have both these numbers with these ranks so what you do is you add the ranks together so we've got one plus two equals three and then you divide by two because there's two of them there if there was three of them the same, then you divide by three. Um, so, calculator. Oh, it's, oh, it's the right there. Um, okay, so three divided. Oh, I don't know why I'm using the calculator because that's one point five. So I'm under pressure. <laughs> uh, so that would actually be one point five, and that would actually be one point five instead. <clears throat> oh wait, hold on. No, it wouldn't. That would be actually 1.5, and that would be 1.5 as the rank. The rate doesn't change the rank, is the one that changes. And then we've got here, so you'd add 5 and 6 together, which is 11. You divide by 2, which you get 5.5. Why just change it to 5.5? Like that. In fact, yes, it was five before, it was six before. And then for these two here, you add seven and eight together, which is 15, divide by two, and you get seven. Point five. <laughs> um, but actually, if you look at them, because there's only two um, ranks, it's basically just in between the two. 
that's what you're actually doing. Um, so it's not like oh, you don't really have to go through all this. You can just, if you know, if it's just between two of them, it's just the ones that are in between. So 1.5 is in between 1 and 2, 5.5 is in between 5 and 6, 7.5 is in between 7 and 8. It's pretty straightforward in that sense. Now once you've got those, you need to put them in this table. So I've already put in, so you've got the six participants and you've got their rating. So what you're doing is you're matching up their rating with the rank. So if you had a rating of 3, the rank was also 3. So you can put that one in straight away. Now if you had a rating of 4, the rank was also 4. So that's straightforward. If the rating was 2, the rank was 1.5. If it was 6, it was 7.5. If it was 2, we've already had that one, that's 1.5. And if it was 5, it was 5.5. If it was 9, it was 7. If it was 7, it was 9. If it was 5, it was 5.5. If it was 10, it was 8. Oh, no, I've done that wrong. I've gone wrong because 10, the rating of 10, is actually the rank of 12. Let's just check. Rating of 5 is the rank of 5.5, five, so that's right. Rating of 9 is, sorry, rating of 7 is 9. Yeah, so I just got that one wrong. Rating of 6 is 7.5. And rating of 8 is 10. Okay, so we've got all those there. What you need to do is total up this column and total up this column. So we've got 3 plus 4 plus 1.5 plus 7.5 plus 1.5 plus 5.5. That gets us 23. And then we add this one up. So we've got 7 plus 9 plus 5.5 plus 12 plus 7.5 10. So we've got 51. I just know it's I've done something wrong. Rated of seven, uh, rated of nine is actually eleven. So that would make that fifty-five. <clears throat> now, this formula here, we basically use the one that is the lowest rank. So we're going to use R one because twenty-three is smaller than fifty-five. And we're using this formula, so which says R one on it. If it was this one that was lower these would just be a two instead so we've got r1 so that's 23 minus now n is always the number of participants in this um section so we've got six so it's going to be six and then six inside the brackets um plus one and then all of that divided by two so if you work that out you end up with six times by seven um, and divided by 2, and obviously 23, taking that away. So then when you do 6 times 7, you're going to end up with 42. So that really there is still kind of, if we put all this in brackets, you, what it reminds you to do is work out everything on the right hand side before you take it away from the R value of 23. If you start kind of doing 23 to 42 then divided by 2, it'll not work right. So you have to do 42 divided by 2, um, which is 21, and it ends up being 23 minus 21, and you end up with a value of 2. So your observed value for uh, the man with me. Whitney, who is two, but you can't just stop there because you then need to find your critical value. So to calculate the critical value, we have to look at n. So n1 and n2 is basically how many participants you have in the first condition, how many participants you have in the second condition. So there's six. So we look where six and six crosses. So the uh, so the critical value is five because it's right there. Um, so we've got an observed value of 2 and we've got a critical value of 5. Now to determine whether or not it's significant, the observed value of u has to be equal or less than the critical value of u. So 2 is less than 5. So we've got the observed value is less than the critical value. So therefore 
the results are significant, there is a difference between the textbooks. There's another example in the um, handbook workbook for you to have a go at. See if you can do it on your own again, even though you've done it once before. See if you can do it again. Uh, see if you can perhaps do this one again without um, having everything filled in. Maybe make yourself some empty tables and go through it. Um, hopefully this has been helpful. If you've got any questions, just let me know.